Now, as much as we all love a great single-player game, there's nothing quite like sitting down with a couple of friends for some cooperative play. Well, these 10 video games, all of them which feature co-op multiplayer in one way or another, actually relished toying with player expectations and turning the co-op experience into something of a cruel joke. These co-op modes are all absolutely soaked in playful, mischievous intent. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 cruel tricks video games played on co-op players. Number 10. Killing off one player's character near the end. Brothers, a tale of two sons. Now, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons is just one of several Joseph Farris directed games on this list, and that's because the guy sure knows how to create co-op games that thoroughly press the player's buttons. Though Brothers was originally conceived as a single-player title in which the player controlled two brothers using a different thumbstick for each brother, there was nothing stopping two people playing the game together by handling a side of the controller each. The 2019 Nintendo Switch version, however, did finally introduce official multiplayer support. The game is focused around two brothers, in a Rick and Morty fashion, cooperating in order to complete puzzles and advance their journey to find a cure for their father's illness. The older brother is the strongest of the two, whilst the younger is smaller and more agile. Yet, near the end of the game, the rug is well and truly pulled out when the older brother is mortally wounded by a giant spider and dies. For the remainder of the story, the younger brother is naturally the only playable character, and worse still, you're saddled with the task of dragging his corpse around and then burying him. As a single player experience, this was absolutely devastating, and in co-op, it forces the player controlling the older brother to sit around for the final 20 minutes or so of the game while their friend finishes it. Or for true dramatic effect, they could have just left the room. Number 9. Making Players Fight Over Loot Borderlands 2 Though Borderlands 2's four-player co-op multiplayer was widely praised by critics, players actually loathed one aspect of the game's bizarre shared loot system. After felling a huge boss, for example, the resulting loot would be left for players to divide by themselves, rather than giving each member of the party their own walled-off loot. Human nature being what it is, even good friends playing together would try and pilfer the best legendary loot before anybody else. And that made for a hugely frustrating experience, especially if you were a sniper in position far away from your targets, as by the time that you got there, there was nothing left. Gearbox claimed that the shared loot feature was a design choice intended to encourage cooperation, yet it was ultimately hilariously naive to expect people, especially randoms on the internet, to be courteous about basically anything. Thankfully, they listened to the vocal feedback for Borderlands 3, with each player getting their own singular loot drop during co-op gameplay, prompting the game's art director Scott Kester to proclaim, no more loot ninjas. Number 8. One player has reality warping schizophrenia. Kane and Lynch. IO Interactive's cult fave third person shooter Kane and Lynch Dead Men features a co op version of its own campaign in which two players can play as each of the titular violent criminals. While in the single player campaign, players control the more level headed of the duo, Kane, in co op, the second player takes the reins of his psychotic, schizophrenic, murderous pal, Lynch. If the single player game made it abundantly clear that Lynch was prone to violent outbursts without medication, the co op mode explains why in the most twisted way possible. While playing as Lynch, player 2 will experience hallucinations as part of his psychotic fear filter, meaning that on occasion, during story points and when you chain kills together, harmless civilians will resemble police officers and female civilians will often even have a pig's head. Believing the civilians to be members of the police, this gives Lynch the ability to melee execute these air quotes cops. It's certainly a clever and unique way of putting players in a tortured character's mindset, even if anyone who loaded up the cop for some brainless violent mayhem got a much more disturbing experience than they ever imagined. Number 7. Giving you a trophy for killing your own teammate – Rogue Trooper Redux who among us doesn't love trophies and achievements? The thrilling dopamine surge of a hard-earned chief speaks for itself, and if players needed to do something sketchy in order to get their latest hit, well, they're more than likely going to. And so we have 2017's Rogue Trooper Redux, which received flack upon its release for offering a secret achievement called Accidental Killer, which could be unlocked by killing any of your teammates during an online match with friendly fire turned on. Obviously, encouraging you to team kill in a competitive game makes this a rather unsporting achievement, and though it left some players rather miffed, developers Rebellion never revised or removed it, instead offering up a wafer-thin rationale for the accolade's inclusion. They said, The game's about betrayal of your own kind, after all, so we figured it would be fun to have a trophy where you betray your teammates, perhaps unintentionally, perhaps not. 
Number six, boost mode lets players help or troll their friends. New Super Mario Bros. U. New Super Mario Bros. U introduced one of the most brilliantly innovative co-op multiplayer features in the history of the Mario franchise with the fantastically creative Boost Mode. In addition to four players playing the game like a typical co-op Mario platformer, Boost Mode allowed a fifth player to use the Wii U gamepad to manipulate gameplay on the fly. In theory, this would allow the omniscient fifth player to spawn blocks that helped players advance while also disabling enemies. But in reality, many took this opportunity to just screw around with their friends instead. The fifth player could spawn blocks to block their paths, prevent teammates from picking up power-ups, and even manipulate interactive parts of the environment to work against the other players. Sadly, Boost Mode was removed for the 2019 Nintendo Switch re-release due to the console's lack of a dedicated gamepad. Number 5. Making you both murder an adorable stuffed elephant. It takes two. Joseph Farris strikes again, and this time, in his most recent co-op offering, It Takes Two. The two-player multiplayer game puts gamers in the shoes of Cody and May, a married couple imminently planning to get a divorce who are magically transported into the bodies of two handmade dolls created by their distraught daughter Rose. Together, the pair must cooperate in order to complete a series of relationship tests whilst making their way back to Rose. And for the most part, the co-op gameplay is both absurdly entertaining and wonderfully creative. Except, that is, for or the following scene. You see, midway through the game, Cody and May reason that making Rose cry on them, the very act that turned them into dolls in the first place, possibly would undo the spell, and decide upon one surefire way to wring tears from her eyes. Players are then tasked with teaming up to take down Cutie, Rose's adorable, sweet-voiced stuffed elephant. And when we say take down, we actually mean kill, as the sequence requires players to drag the poor creature over the edge of a cabinet to her doom. Making this act mandatory to progress the story is harsh enough, but the developers clearly relished in making the player feel like absolute garbage, given Cutie's desperate pleas for help throughout this rather prolonged sequence. Number 4. Movie Night Mode encourages players to save their own skin, The Dark Pictures Anthology With the launch of their Until Dawn spin-off series, The Dark Pictures Anthology, Supermassive Games introduced a novel feature called Movie Night. Between two and five players can take part, with each player controlling a number of characters throughout the story, with the controller simply being passed between the players when the perspective shifts to one of their characters. While in theory the idea is that a group of friends will work together to ensure that all of their characters collectively survive, the Dark Pictures games naturally make it rather difficult to get everybody to the end in one piece. Beyond the split-second QTE sequences, players are regularly forced to make some rather tricky decisions, often having to weigh up whether they want to risk their own character's fate in order to save another. Basically, to stay in the game and not become a passive observer, you're encouraged to keep your own characters alive above all others. And this sometimes requires you to make some decisions which can either cause the death of other characters or at least increase their likelihood. It's quite brilliant, but also very underhanded. Handed. Number 3. Grief Mode indirectly pits you against others Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Call of Duty Black Ops 2's Grief Mode was an intriguing mashup of co-op and competitive multiplayer that has bafflingly never appeared in a Call of Duty game since. While technically a competitive 4v4 multiplayer mode, the beauty of Grief is that there isn't any way for players to directly harm their opponents on the other side. The goal is simply to outlast the rival team by any means necessary, and because you can't just gun the other side down, you have to get pretty creative about it. You can hinder the other team by blocking paths, refusing to open doors, funneling zombies towards them and even shooting at them, which while not causing any physical harm will slow their movements to a crawl. It's an hilariously and frankly underappreciated mode which tests the player's capacity for underhanded trolley tactics in the pursuit of victory, even if the real enemies are still the undead horde. After all, a side can only claim victory if the other team is dead, and at least one member of their own manages to survive the rest of the round. Number 2. Making you fight to the death at the end. A way out, splinter cell conviction, and many more. There's perhaps no single crueler trick in a co-op game than forcing teammates to turn on one another in the final stretch. This most infamously happened in yet another Joseph Farris game, A Way Out, where players take control of escaped prisoners Leo and Vincent only for the end of the game to reveal that Vincent was an undercover cop the entire time. And so the finale sees the two battling one another in an epic shootout, with it made explicitly clear that only one of them can survive. And this is just one of the most recent examples though, as Splinter Cell Conviction's co-op campaign similarly forced players to duke it out at the end, as did the classic beat-em-up Double Dragon. It's an especially insidious trick considering that players have spent hours building up an in-game camaraderie with one another, only for the dynamic to be flipped on its head in the most violent and ultimate way. 
and number one, no respawns until both players die, Contra. 1987's arcade classic shooter Contra is infamous for being one of the most challenging games of its era, if not ever, and even the inclusion of a two-player mode does not do much to help reduce the stress. Whether you're playing solo or together, you've got a maximum of three continues to make it through the game with, but if you're playing co-op and your teammate runs out of lives, you're forced to continue alone until you yourself run out of lives as well. There's no checkpoint respawn for your partner nor any means in-game to resurrect them. You have to try and push ahead solo until you can't make it any further, at which point you can both cash in one of your three continues together. Needless to say, it rather undermines the appeal of co-op if you have to spend potentially lengthy sections of the game trying to plow on without your backup. Then again, most players probably won't last all that long on their own at least. And there we go my friends, those were 10 cruel tricks video games played on co-op players. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ but the O is a zero, or you can swing by Instagram where it's the same handle RetroJ but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we spoke today about co-op games that end up turning you on the people that you are supposed to be working with, in real life I can only encourage the opposite, that you, that you work together with your neighbour because at the end of the day, by building bridges instead of burning them, that's pretty much the only way we're going to get through this crazy thing called life, and that is together, my friend. So be kind to yourself, but also treat your neighbour with love as well. Big love to you all, and stay safe out there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.